I guess when you're the commissioner of the league, a lot of people look to you as the person to make the change, to force the owners into doing something that they haven't done in such a long time. I think when you look at Roger Goodell, a lot of people kind of point the finger at him immediately because he is the commissioner. Uh, he's just mentioned that doing away with the Rooney Rule, possibly bringing in independent people from the outside to take a look at it, to to make sure that they're trying to do the right things, and if not, fixing it so it can get done the right way, which I, I think all that is great. But when you talk about Roger, he is more, in my opinion, you just look at the league office, and you look at what they do on Park Avenue, he is more of an ally for this more so than against it as an enemy. Um, from whether or not it's it's minorities and black or women in the league office, they, to a degree, are trying to practice what they preach. Now, you got to remember, the league, and I say this consistently, the league is different than the owners. The owners all got different addresses, whether it's One Buck Place in Tampa, whether it's Frisco and Cowboys, uh, uh, the Cowboys in Frisco, Texas, or whether it's the Rams in Thousand Oaks or Gore Hills, everybody's address is different. Two black head coaches out of 32 teams, 70% black in the league, right, among players. Then It's easy to take a character that you can just focus to iron. Roger Goodell. But Key just mentioned Goodell in terms of the league hiring practice as an ally. And, and he, right, you know, he doesn't look bad in all this, but the owners, he can't force owners to hire people. He can just kind of help put rules in place that incentivize them to hire people. There's really nothing that Roger Goodell could do. This is a relationship business, man. And the problem is when you have these 32 entities that are operating as their own single entity, right, they are making their best business decision for them. Now, I've heard things suggested key like creating a summit for owners, right, to be around more uh, black or minority coaching candidates or GM candidates to get an opportunity to, when you're in proximity, get a chance to talk to guys, see who you like, build relationships. But the reality is like, it needs to be something along those lines that get there to be more familiarity with who the most competent individuals are in that particular space that can have those jobs, Max. I don't really know what kind of policies to, to incentivize teams even more so could be instituted by Roger Goodell. You know, well, you shouldn't have to ins- That's a slap in the face in, jar- in, 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 in general, Key. Yeah, you shouldn't have to incentivize anybody to do the right thing. When you look at other sports, the other two sports uh, that we would call the big three, right? In basketball, I believe there's 14 black head coaches in the NBA. And I think the NBA makes up close to 75% African Americans. Uh, I think, Jay, you, you, mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's the right yeah. number. Mm-hmm. So that's essentially half of the league. There's 32 teams in the NBA. There's about 14 black head coaches. 30. And the reason that the reason that is to me is because the NBA circles is a little more urban. Basketball is a little more urban. You know, New York, Chicago, certain parts of Jersey, L.A., Oakland. I mean, you know, I could just pick through some of the rough parts of Dallas, Texas. It's a little more urban. So the basketball owners and presidents of teams start at the AAU level. You know, Jay, they around in them sweaty gyms trying to scout the next LeBron James at a young age. So they see certain things and they feel comfortable with certain things from a poverty standpoint to just overall talent and being in neighborhoods that look totally different. Where the NFL, they're not in that. Major League Baseball, there's there's only, you know there's only two African-American managers in Major League Baseball. And so, and there's only the makeup of Major League Baseball, and Evan knows this, I think, because he's a baseball guy, the makeup is only about 7 to 9% of African-Americans. So you get less because there's less baseball players yeah. Yeah. at all. And, and so it's a Latin game, right, essentially. So you get a little more Latin managers. So I understand all of that. What I don't understand is if we got 70% plus African-American football players, why do we only have – 
a small percentage of head coaches, offensive, defensive coordinators, personnel people, and one, one African-American president of a team in the history of the league. I do want to say this very quickly. Even though I do think it is an insult that you would need to incentivize to hire more minorities, I will also be the first that if the opportunity is there, I'm going to take advantage of it. It's the same way the government incentivizes minorities to have businesses. I own minority-owned businesses, MBEs, where you get different grants from the government to start that. So it doesn't mean that just because you're insulted. It doesn't mean you can't take advantage of the opportunity. 7% is the number uh, key of Major League Baseball players who are African-American at the moment. Yeah, what did I say, so, 8 to 9? No, no, no seven? you got it right. You said something like that. I mean, it, the point is that it's, it's, it more reflects the population of the players yes. than obviously, and so does the NBA, than, yes. than does the NFL. And let me just say this, for those out there thinking – because uh, a lot of teams are like, I have this rule that I ha- I know who I want to hire. He happens to be white. I have this rule now. I have to interview a black candidate, so I'm going to get around that just with some, to- you know, with a token interview. And that's what Flores' lawsuit is really about. I'll just remind people that a lot of white people in this country throughout its history have had to have rules and laws passed in order to get them to act right, especially toward black people. The Civil Rights Act. They had a Civil Rights Act in 1964 to prohibit discrimination in hiring. What do you think, that came out of the ether because there wasn't discrimination in hiring? So as much as rules are flawed and it feels like, hey, in a free country, people should be, you should be able to do what you want. When when bad behavior rises to a certain level, when when you see kind of systemic uh, injustice, and that reflects even in, in who's in positions of power, you do need some rules sometimes to get it to be more normal. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.